We we'll begin in Zimbabwe, where the citizens mark 42 years since the southern African country gained independence from Great Britain. The landlocked country, formerly known as Rhodesia, has gone from an economic boom to massive inflation and is now on its way back to recovery. Just a brief history of Zimbabwe's journey. The Republic of Zimbabwe is a landlocked country located in Southeast Africa, between the Zambezi and Limpopo rivers, bordered by South Africa to the south, Botswana to the southwest, Zambia to the north, and Mozambique to the east. The capital and largest city is Harare, while the second largest city is Bulawayo. A country of roughly 15 million people, Zimbabwe has 16 official languages, with English, Shona, and in Dembele, the most common. It was once known as the Jewel of Africa for its great prosperity. What is today known as Zimbabwe evolved out of what was once the territory of South Zambiza. After World War II, Rhodesia had an economic boom stemming from the production of tobacco and chrome, which were in high demand. The independent Rhodesian state was widely unrecognized by the international community. Led by native-born veteran pilot Ian Smith, the state would become enveloped by two Cold War proxy force, the ZAPU, which was aligned with the Soviet Union, and the ZANU, which split off. The ZANU was aligned with and sought ultimately the minority government, settled for peace brokered by Great Britain, in which the British will take temporary control over the nation and oversee elections so that an all-inclusive government can be established. And with the election results in, Robert Mugabe became Zimbabwe's first prime minister. The solution on the Upon becoming prime minister, Mugabe created an inclusive government which included members of the opposing political parties in his cabinet. South Africa's apartheid government and Mugabe quickly became enemies as Mugabe vocally supported anti-apartheid groups in South Africa. In response, they started a military blockade of trade entering landlocked Zimbabwe and bucked anti-Mugabe white militias. In the 1980s, Mugabe's economic reforms slowly began to fail and economic growth came to a halt. Throughout the 1990s, Mugabe began to seize white-owned farms and other properties and redistributed it. This led to the exodus of most whites to the UK or South Africa, as they had no viable future in Zimbabwe. We objected too. And the British should know that. This is Zimbabwe. It cannot be an extension of Britain. The following years saw the rise of massive inflation in the country. And in 2008, the country's currency became almost worthless. Respect that law. And they must vacate. Despite the massive economic downturn, Mugabe managed to hold on to power. In February 2016, he said he had no plans for retiring and will stay in power till God calls. His wife and former secretary, Grace, had been widely considered to have been consolidating power in preparation to take over once Mugabe has passed. Zimbabwe, however, witnessed a change on November 15, 2017, when Mugabe was placed under house arrest and possibly forced out of office by the Zimbabwe National Army that insisted this wasn't a coup. This supposed coup came after the October 2017 forced dismissal of Vice President Emerson Mnangagwa. On 19 November 2017, Mugabe was sacked by ZANU-PF and Grace Mugabe, alongside 20 of her high-ranking supporters, were expelled from the party. On 24th November 2017, at the National Sports Stadium in Harare, Emerson Nangagwa 
was sworn in as president of Zimbabwe. He has since been re-establishing relationships with the Western world, as well as readjusting policies of former president Robert Mugabe. Happy Independence Day, Zimbabwe.